and we're back with part two. Uh, so yeah, um, the first book is going to mainly focus on the, on the tribe. I, I don't want to say the Native American tribe because, you know, it's not a Native American tribe. Uh, but it's inspired by. Uh, it's also inspired by World of Darkness. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but uh, we're talking about here uh, uh, Vampire the Masquerade and uh, Werewolf and stuff like that. So there's some of uh, the Werewolf mythos that got into this to uh, to inspire uh, how I treated the tribe. Uh, so, without giving too much away, uh, the, the tribe is named the Tribe of the Wolf. And uh, the tribe uh, lives in a s sort of enchanted forest. Uh, let's say a protected forest uh, that has grown around a tree there, which is called the spirit tree by the, the tribe and the tribe's life goal is to keep that tree safe and uh, in order to help them to achieve that goal um, one warrior in their tribe is uh, possessed by the spirit of the wolf and turns into a werewolf, essentially. Uh, without giving too much away, it's only part of a larger whole, uh, which will become more obvious as the story unfolds and we reach the second, third book, etc. Um, one thing I can talk about is the name of the series, because that has been decided for a long, long time. The series will be called the Seeds of Life Saga. Uh, so you can just think about the, the title by yourselves and imagine what the, the larger story is about. And once again, it's going to be two trilogies uh, spanning two generations. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big, big story. Uh, so, yeah, uh, I've talked about all the major characters. Um, so this first story will focus mainly on humans and dwarves. Um, the dwarves are not indigenous to the area. Um, they have been displaced uh, s several uh, centuries ago. They had to leave their ancestral homes and uh, move to a safer location. And they ended up uh, near the um, human lands to the south, uh, near a large, uh, well, not large country, but almost an empire, which is more or less inspired by the, the French nation in medieval times. So we're talking about French names here, uh, which, is, which explains uh, Louis' name. Uh, Louis de la Tourelle. Yeah. His name was... Uh, I, I had to think a, a little bit about it, because Louis is a classic name. Now, although in English you tend to uh, pronounce it uh, Louis, uh, it's re really Louis, since, of course, he's French. Uh, but uh, de la Tourelle, uh, if you translate word by word, his name is... Uh, Louis of the Turret, which sounds silly, uh, but that was the point, because I wanted a name that sounded noble, 
but when you thought about it, it's stupid or insignificant. Well, not, not stupid, but insignificant. So yeah, usually a noble, you know, it will refer to uh, the town or the county or, that they come from. So to say that his name is of the turret, like the turret in the middle of nowhere, you know, it's absolutely insignificant. And in contrast to that, the guy has an ego the size of, uh, of Europe. So, uh, so that, that's the reason behind his name. And I, I tried to do the same thing with the other nobles, uh, but not the same way. But uh, that, that's something for, for the, the reader to, uh, to discover. Uh, what else can I say about this? Well, the first series, at least. Hmm. I've covered most of the basics, and the rest can be covered once I start presenting uh, the stories themselves. So I'll talk about the second project then. Uh, the second, uh, oh yeah, yeah, that's important to say. So yeah, uh, coming back to the first project. I think, again, that's something I might have mentioned in a different video, but uh, at first, when I started writing uh, the first book, um, it was more or less a story, uh, storytelling thing, storytelling project, but also a sort of... Uh, self-analysis because back then I had just been diagnosed uh, with uh, depression and I was trying to take a step back from myself and you know I'll analyze who I was so most of the main characters represent a part of my uh, uh, of my personality and by that, I don't mean that they're, you know, one-dimensional. I try to give them as much of a, you know, uh, a, f a full personality. However, the basis for their personality is a part of me. Uh, so because of that, that, that might be why I am more passionate about the second project than this one. Uh... Because in a way, it shows a bit of, probably a bit too much of who I am <laughs> to, to total strangers. But, you know, it, it's not always e easy to understand uh, your feelings towards something. So, yeah, uh, most of the, of the main characters have something to do with uh, who I am. Uh, for example, uh, Gort... Uh, uh, the dwarf is uh, sort of my uh, my brashness, uh, my desire for justice, um, while um, Louis is more of uh, my <laughs> sort of uh, overacting. Uh, part uh, a part of me, uh, the one that tends to take himself a bit too seriously sometimes. Um, the antagonist uh, represents part of me that I, I really dislike. Uh, um, and my my tendency to uh, to lose control of uh, of my anger my uh, the way I tend to act before thinking you know, that, that sort of stuff so most of the characters represent a part of me which could turn some people off but no, no, I think that they're good enough characters by themselves to carry their own roles uh, but 
for someone who knows this and reads, might have some fun trying to analyze me, who knows? <laughs> That's not one of the goals of the book, anyway. <laughs> so yeah, let's talk about the second project. So, uh, second project doesn't have a title yet. Uh, that one is going to be very, very difficult to find a title to. Uh, because I'm afraid it would reveal too much, so I'll have to be very careful about how I call it. Um, so what are what are my sources of inspira inspiration for the second uh, second project? Uh, well, before I, I talk about that, I should talk about the length of the project. At first, I plan on uh, writing five books, so one story in five books, like a quintet, if you prefer. Is that how, we, how we would call it? Well, <laughs> quintet is like that's a musical term, isn't it? So um, at first that, that was the idea, but then as I started writing about it, I realized that uh, I might not have enough material to. Uh, to justify five books. So it will probably be a trilogy. Could be more, but yeah, signs point to, uh, towards a trilogy. So wh what are my uh, sources of inspiration? Well, this project is a pure storytelling project. I took something, an idea, a what-if scenario, which of course I'm not going to tell you what is that scenario because that's part of the fun, part of the fun is discovering what it is. Uh, that's a mystery part. So yeah, I, I started with a what-if scenario and just ran with it. And it marries two of my uh, of my loves. I've always loved history and mythology. Because when you think about it, mythology you know, and history are intertwined. Um, history is basically mythology that uh, became fact. Because uh, sometimes what we know as what, what, what we think we know as history has never happened. It's just, you know, the people in charge have controlled the narrative and the narrative became history. Uh, you, you, you can see that happening even today uh, and we have all the tools in our possession to know what's going on around us. And yet so many people are totally unaware because they will believe the first thing that they hear. And uh, I'm not trying to, you know, point at, at uh, some people in particular because you have people all over the political spectrum that uh, react that way. Uh, it's sort of a human failing. So yeah. Um, I took my two loves and decided to just merge them together. Um, there's a little bit of uh, inspiration that came from the first movie. I, I don't mean the first, because the rest were crap. The first Highlander movie. Uh, what I mean by that was the, the part where you know, sometimes you had flashbacks from, you know, uh, different eras of the past. So, so I, I took those in mind and tried to incorporate something um, slightly similar to it. Um, the two... So far, uh, I've almost finished the first draft of the first book. And so far, I would say there are like four, 
four main characters, but there's really one main character. Well, yeah, there are two characters that are more important than the others. Uh, in, in this project, it's not really... I'm not trying to fool people, you know, as to who's important. It's kind of obvious from the start, but that's not what's interesting about uh, the story. Uh, I decided to start with a cliché and sort of reinvent it. Uh, in the prologue of the book, uh, it follows a uh, a man who uh, wakes up in a dark alley and the guy just can't remember anything. So yeah, classical trope of amnesia. Yeah, sure. Eh, we've seen that uh, a thousand times. But no, no, I'm not going where you think I'm going with this. So I was very aware that this was a cliche, so I, I tried to, uh, I did my best to just avoid the pitfalls around that. And, uh, of course, since it's just the first draft, I, I'm not going to give too, ma too many details, but uh, th this person is going to be one of the main characters. And uh, after the prologue, you know, it jumps to somewhere else. Because in the prologue, I, I wanted... What I wanted to do was to make it... Really not obvious as to when this was going on. Is it before? Is it after? Is it roughly in, in the present? So that That's the, the main part where... You, you really don't know when it, when it's going on. Uh, it was really to just to present the character and uh, catch the reader's interest. Uh, once the first uh, chapter uh, starts, that's when we meet the second uh, main character, who is uh, a young reporter. Uh, sort of firebrand uh, type of reporter, you know, kind of like uh, Ben Yorick in uh, in Daredevil. Uh, if you've seen the, the Netflix uh, series, you know, someone who who is not afraid to dig deep and sometimes uh, do uh, you know skirt around the edges to get uh, what they want and uh, I think that uh, that character is really really interesting um, and once again it's a it's a relatively well no, not relatively it's a pretty serious story just like uh, the fantasy uh, project but it's part of my personality to inject some uh, humor into them uh, so um, part of the, the humor will come from the interactions between the two main characters and you have two supporting characters which are really important that I'm going to to nickname the Glad Brothers. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to give more information about those for now, but uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, funny interactions between those two as well. Uh, they're sort of an odd couple uh, for those who are old enough to remember uh, um, um, Walter Matthau and uh, Oh, man. Jack Lemon. Yes, thank you, Brain. Uh, I'm not very good with names, but yeah. Um, so if you want an idea of what I'm talking about, uh, just uh, go and watch uh, Grumpy Old Men. 
that was a more recent example of their work together, but the odd couple, of course, was the TV series where they, they worked together for a long time. But uh, yeah, these guys uh, have a great chemistry, and uh, they're sort of best friends, but at the same time, they hate each other. So yeah, it's, the, it's that type of uh, relationship uh, between the, the supporting characters. So, of course, here it's more of a mystery, so part of the fun is discovering where I'm going with this. Um, if... Well, if I think about the reactions of those who have read it so far, eh, it shouldn't be too hard for people to figure out... Ah, roughly what the scenario is about. Of course, where I'm going with it, who knows. But, uh, for, for people who are, you know, are very, are good at uh, analyzing stuff, like catching little details here and there, they should be able to, you know, to understand what's going on, what's roughly what's going on. Yeah, there are ints here and there, so, you know, if you're that type of writer who analyzes a lot, you'll figure it out in no time. Uh, so that's part of the fun. But then again, it's where I'm going with this, you know, it's not, it's not the goal, it's the journey that's important. So, if you understand what the goal is, doesn't mean you, you'll know what, what's going to happen uh, beforehand. Uh, that's my main goal in whatever I write. I don't want the reader to know what's, what's going to happen. Otherwise, where's the fun in that? No, how many movies I've seen that were totally ruined because they were too obvious? So you know what's going to happen. No, it's like it's rail. The, the story is railroaded. It's not fun. It's not fun. So that, that's what I try to avoid at all cost when I write. And uh, the story takes place mainly in New York. Uh, I haven't had the chance to visit New York, so of course. I had to study a bit and to, uh, to make it as realistic as possible while creating my own uh, fictional world. I, 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 want, I want the story to be believable enough that it takes place in our world. But, of course, it's, it's fiction, so... <laughs> but anyway... Um, takes place in New York uh, in the present day and uh, what starts as a simple story as, as I said one of the main characters is a reporter so the story starts as the reporter is uh, is trying to get a story about uh, about prostitution and uh, the mafia, how gangs are involved and such. And things quickly spiral out of control and uh, she, <laughs> the reporter gets uh, stuck with the other main character, the one that uh, the amnesia guy and uh, that that's when she starts noticing weird stuff and realizes that you know some things simply do not add up and there's far more than meets the eye so as she digs deeper and deeper into this she discovers uh, a world that is simply that that 
people are un unaware of. And keep in mind, I'm following a what-if scenario here. So that's why a reader will uh, probably spot what I'm talking about while reading. And, of course, uh, I think that names are very important. Which is why in the first project I, I chose, uh, for example, uh, Native American names that reflected the personality of the character. And uh, the names I use in the second, uh, second project are also important. I won't say how, but they are important. So, yeah. I guess that uh, names are, uh, are more or less one of my passions, <laughs> if I think about it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's one of the, the little things, one of those details that uh, I think that some people will really appreciate. Uh, I, li I like going into those little things, uh, because in my mind, these are the things that really make something or someone interesting. Uh, and in everyday life, you know, it's the little things that are important to me. So, for example, if someone uh, doesn't care about the little things, then it tells me that that person, since they don't care about the little things, they don't really care about the bigger things. Um, of course, that's just my way of seeing things, so <laughs> it's probably just a, a problem for uh, coming from my personality. Uh, I tend to nitpick, but yeah, uh, I I'm pretty confident about the second project. I'm I also confident about the first one, but the second one, as I said, I'm far more passionate about. And I think it's it's going to catch people's interest really easily. And uh, eh, who knows? If everything goes well, maybe I'll be able to uh, to publish. And my most sincere wish is to be able to earn a living through writing. Sadly, I'm not able to continue uh, the, the job I used to do, uh, teaching. So, uh, writing would be the perfect uh, substitution to this. Anyway, ramble a lot, and oh boy, 28 minutes to this part, so over an hour for, uh, for the both of them. So yeah, if you've lasted this long. And wow, if you've lasted this long, man, I don't know what to say. You're weird. But if you lasted this long, I'm going to uh, ask you to comment. Why? Because I've covered plenty of stuff and at the same time I haven't covered much. So you might have questions about the different projects, or even, you know, about me or about my background, uh, you know, about English and stuff like that. So, if you have a question, go ahead and ask in the comments. Uh, if it's something easy to answer, I'll just answer in the comments. Uh, if, if it's something really elaborate, I, I might make a separate video just to cover these, uh, these questions. Of course, I have very few subscribers and even fewer views to my videos, so I'd, I don't really expect to get any questions, but you never know, you never know. Which is why I leave this as sort of an open-ended question. So, if you want to ask me something, do it in the comments, and I'll do my best to, to answer uh, truthfully and fully. So, until then, I'll see you next time. Have a nice day.